Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the T-Motor F15 toothpick. In this video I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up and then head outdoors and test it out. The T-Motor F15 toothpick comes inside this nice little box. Inside you can find the quadcopter which is pre-assembled but you should note that it is only available in a plug and play version which means that you will need to add your own radio receiver. In addition, you're also getting a 25 volts 470 microfarad capacitor, which I think that you should add in case you're going to fly the F15 using 4S batteries. And you're also getting one set of HQ Prop 320 bi-bladed propellers and another set of HQ Prop 325 tri-bladed propellers. Since you're only given one set of each, it is recommended to order some extra propellers. Now let's go over the components that are being used. First of all, the F15 is using the T-Motor F15 4500 kV motors, which can handle up to 4S LiPo batteries. On the center of the quadcopter, you can find the nameless RC F412T all-in-one flight controller. It features a 12 ampere 4-in-1 BLLES ESC and an F4 flight controller, which came pre-flashed with Petaflight 4.1.0. On top of the flight controller, mounted inside a pretty robust 3D printed TPU mount, you can find the Runcom Nano 2 nano sized FPV camera. And behind it, the Nameless RC Nano 400 VTX, which supports 48 channels, features RC trim protocol, uses an IPX antenna connector, and has a selectable output strength of 25, 100, 200, and 400 millivolts. Out of the box, the VTX is not fully configured. So first of all, head over to the port section and make sure that the VTX RC trump is selected on the peripherals on UR2 and then head over to the video transmitter and load the VTX table from a file which I'm going to include in the description box of this video. After you're going to load the file, you'll be able to adjust the settings either via Betaflight or Betaflight OSD. So for example, now I set the band to fetch arc, channel 1, and the power is set to 25 millivolts. In addition, I also recommend to set the low power on this arm either to on or to on until first arm, which means that even if you are going to set the output strength to 400, when you are going to turn on the quad on the bench, it is going to be set to 25 millivolts, and it is only going to be set to 400 millivolts after you are going to arm the quadcopter. In terms of dimensions, the weight of the F15 toothpick, including an FR Sky Arc cell receiver, which I've already installed, is 68.9 grams. After adding the GNB 520 mAh 3S LHV battery, which is the battery which I recommend to use, it brings us to a total weight of 110.6 grams. In addition, the wheelbase of the frame is 109 mm. The distance between the right motors and the left ones, and also between the back ones and the front ones is 78 mm, so this frame features a true X pattern, and the thickness of the bottom unibody plate is 3 mm. In order to install your radio receiver, you will need to first of all remove the canopy by unscrewing these four M2 screws. Then be careful while removing the canopy since the flight controller is soft mounted using these rubber spacers. So let's remove it. And as you can see, I mounted the FR Sky RXSR receiver over here under the VTX and I soldered its connector to the plus 5 volts, ground, and the inverted s -bus pad, which is located over here, and in case you would like to use a DSMX receiver, which is using 3 volts, you can use this pad over here to power it up, and you can use this uninverted pad, which is located over here, and linked to RX1 as well. Then before putting everything back, make sure to bind your radio receiver with your radio transmitter, and make sure that everything works properly on Betaflight. In addition, when putting back the canopy, do not forget the rubber o-rings, since they separate the 4-in-1 ESC from the bottom plate. As you can see, I mounted the antennas of the radio receiver on the sides using zip ties and hitch rings, and I know this positioning is not ideal, and if you'd like to extend the range of the receiver, you need to align the antennas on 90 degrees. I know this method is also not very appealing, and probably it will look better if you are going to use antenna tubes and put them on the back of the quadcopter, but I find that these tubes seems to get lost after the first crash, and I think that this method is a little bit more reliable. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the Timotor F15 toothpick using two, three, and four S GNB 520 mAh LHV batteries. After testing it out, I can tell you that it flies great on 3S, 
on 2S it's a little bit underpowered and unfortunately my experience using 4S wasn't very successful and I think that if you are going to fly it using 4S first of all you will need to install the 25 volts 470 microfarad capacitor and it will be probably best to use the three blend propellers as it is suggested by Timotor. Unfortunately, I only borrowed this quadcopter from a friend of mine for the purpose of making this review and the weather just went south, so I won't be able to test this quadcopter using the tri propellers and the 4S battery. Anyway, I think that it flies great using this 3S battery and in terms of flight time, you can expect between 3 to 5 minutes depending on how you're going to push the throttle. In addition, if you are a rapid fire user, make sure to put your module on legacy mode as otherwise you are going to experience some issues. Now before wrapping up this video, I have two more advices for you in case you are getting this too thick. First of all, make sure that the VTX antenna is properly secured to the TPO canopy, otherwise it will probably get chewed by the propellers. And I also recommend to change this magic strap, as I don't think this is a very reliable method of securing your batteries, so I suggest replacing it with a proper battery velcro strap. So overall, I think that this is a very nice toothpick, and as you're about to see in the flight footage, it flies very well. Now I'm going to show you the flight footage, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.